Welcome, welcome to Geography Lesson One. I'm Mr. Anderson. I get to give you a whole bunch of uh, geography lessons this uh, trimester. So welcome. This is the class where you are going to learn a ton of stuff. A ton of stuff about the world that you live in and uh, that yeah, you will probably want to show off your knowledge at the end of this trimester because I guarantee at the end of this trimester, you do your lessons, you will know more about your world than 99% of the people in the Tri-Cities. Uh, the 1% that knows as much or maybe a little more than you are probably those who took my class before. So stand by, you're going to learn a lot. Uh, geography got its start uh, with a bunch of unhappy history teachers. Uh, it was a couple of years ago, we were in our little uh, teacher meeting and and uh, some of the teachers were griping about those darn kids. They don't know where anything is. How am I supposed to teach history when they don't know where anything is? And I sat back quietly thinking, well, I think it's our job to teach them, but here's an opportunity. Now, boys and girls, in life, opportunities are going to spring up sometimes. Uh, they are not a lengthy visitor. So an opportunity presents itself, you've got to grab it. So I grabbed it and said, well, hey, I would love to teach HR class and everybody said yeah right that's great go for it Mr. Anderson we would love to have that so that's how it happened uh, and how I got to be a, a geography teacher here for the last couple of years wonderful thing to teach fun thing to learn uh, unhappily <clears throat> so unhappily we have to start this year online due to the stupid coronavirus teaching online eh, it's probably the right thing to do because I really don't want you or your families getting sick this last summer, my family and I had the coronavirus, and basically it sucks. It is not a happy thing, okay? So here we are online. We can handle it. Last trimester, we did it online. Most of my students got their work in. Most of those got A's or B's. Um, so this is how it works. I'm going to try and put up a lesson every day. Now, I am new at this, uh, this Zoom stuff, so uh, it's, it's, it's a big learning curve, and I'm getting better at it. I'll be a little, little shaky at first, but be patient with me. I'll get it together. Um, you're watching the first video now. You should plan on watching as many of these as possible. You can access them uh, from YouTube and watch them at your leisure, but be sure you keep up. These videos will prepare you for the final. The final is big, okay? Ask some of my former students. This is a big test, um, but it, and it counts for most of your grade. But I promise you, when you are done with this class, you are going to know a ton of stuff. You're going to be extremely pleased with yourself. Okay, so there's your little welcome. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with some really easy stuff. Two extremely easy things that you probably had in the third grade. I know when I taught third grade, I taught this stuff. Uh, however, please don't be insulted if I start something really easy because I usually give pretests when I have students in class and invariably there are quite a few that don't know this stuff. So don't be offended. We're going to go through it and, uh, and you will get it. And the first thing we're going to do is the directions. Yes, I know it's simple. Directions. At the top of the map you are going to find a big N. Bottom, well, I'm sorry. This is a compass rose. Okay, you'll find one of these on just about every map or something that looks similar to it. Basically reminding us what we should already know, what the standard directions are, okay? So the N, what do you suppose that stands for? Let me hear it, shout real loud. Yeah, North, okay. And at the bottom of the map, we have South. Yeah, so top of the map, North, bottom of the map, South. The E, of course, stands for East, okay? This is to the right of the map, East to the right of the map, west of course to the left of the map okay so compass rows standard directions north south east and west all right now if you look here between the north and the east you'll see a little compass point says ne which of course stands for northeast if i was in the way you can see it better there it is northeast okay so northeast this little SE stands for Southeast. Here we have Northwest and Southwest. You'll notice these two, the North comes first, okay? It's not West-North, it's Northwest. And down here, South 
comes first. All right. Now, if you want to get really picky, and we probably won't get this picky, uh, but just for your information, what if we want this direction right here? Okay? This is what we would call north by northeast. This one would be north by northwest. Okay, so those are the uh, the finer little points. We will probably never have to deal with those, at least not in this class. Just be aware that they do exist. Okay. All right, so there you have the very first part of the lesson, the four standard directions, north, south, east, west. All right, having done that, we are now going to jump into the... Uh, First map we're going to look at, and that is the map of the world. We're going to do continents and oceans. Continents and oceans. Okay. Uh, this map should look fairly familiar to you. You've probably seen it at one point or another. This is a map of the world. Make it just a little bigger. There we go. Okay, map of the world. Uh, seven continents we're going to learn. And let's start with. The most important one, the most important one, because you live here, okay? This is North America. North America, let's see, North America. What do we have in North America? Well, you probably already know what we have. We have Greenland, we have Canada, we have USSA, USA, we have uh, Mexico. Um, north, towards the top of the map, remember our little directions lessons, this is North America. This is where you live. Well, if this is North America and it's at the top of the map, what do you suppose this is down here towards the bottom of the map? I ah, heard somebody yell it. Okay, this is South America. South America. Okay. Um, South America, South of North America. Easy to remember. Now, some of you that are a little bit you already know a little bit about your maps. You're saying, wait a minute, Mr. Anderson. What about this? I was taught someplace in your educational background that this is Central America. And you are absolutely right. This is what is known as Central America. Central America, however, is not considered a continent. It's, in a, it's a region. Uh, different geographers would teach this in different ways. Some lump Central America in with South America. Uh, most, however, tend to lump Central America in with North America, and for our purposes, that's what we will do. And we will spend uh, quite a bit of time on uh, Central America. You'll know all the countries and, and a little bit about each one. Okay? So we have North America, we have South America. All right, let's go in this direction. And what is that direction? Who is paying attention? Oh, yeah, little kid in the back row. Uh, that is, in fact, east. And the next continent we find is this one. This is an extremely large continent, even though on this map it doesn't look all that big. Uh, it is a very large continent. There are 54 countries, uh, depending on the way you count a country, in the continent of Africa. Okay? Uh, that 54 depends on what you are going to label certain countries. Uh, there are some countries that claim to be their own country, uh, but they're claimed by another country and controlled by another country, and it's a big political hassle. And we'll talk about them when we get to them. We are not going to learn all of the countries in Africa. Uh, there's 54 of them, too many of them. We don't care about most of them. Some of the people that live in them don't care about them. Uh, so we will hit the, hit the highlights there. Uh, the countries I have picked for us to study in, in Africa are based on things that you might see in the newspapers, something historical, something, some great event, uh, either good or bad. Um, these are the reasons that the countries we look at in Africa were selected for our study. Okay? So we have North America, right up here. We have South America. And we have Africa. Now, you're going to notice that these three continents are all kind of separated from the rest of the world. 
um, North America, almost completely surrounded by water. Uh, South America, almost completely surrounded by water. The only connection they have is, yeah, what is it, about 28 miles, I think, 28 miles of the Isthmus of Panama. They stand out as something separate as a continent. Africa uh, is cut off by water everywhere except right up here where the Suez Canal is. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's what, 50 miles long? It's not very long, okay? Um, however, we do have two continents in this giant land mass that are not easily separated by water features. Well, let's take a look at this one. This one, very important one, which we will study in depth. You will know all of the major countries there and a lot of the minor countries. Um, this is Europe, right? Europe is very important to America because a large part of our population hails from Europe. G-U-R-O-P-E, and it's kind of tricky writing with a cursor. Okay, so that is Europe. I'll make an E, there's an E, good. Okay, so that's Europe. The biggest continent in the world, the most populous continent in the world is Asia. Asia is honking huge. Uh, it is home to part of the country with the biggest land mass, and you probably already know that that is Russia. Russia is an enormous country, which we will look at in depth. Uh, it covers 11 time zones, reaches almost halfway around the world. It's huge. It is so big that it does not fit in one continent. Okay? It uh, is mostly in Asia. But this part over here is considered in Europe, right over here. This is considered in Europe. So what divides Europe from Asia? That would be the Ural Mountains. Ural Mountains. Let's get a different color here. Let's make them purple mountains. I mean, purple mountain majesties. All right, right here you have the Ural Mountains. U-R-A-L. Uh, that is the dividing line between Europe and Asia. And this is a great factoid to remember because it is on your final. So when you get to the final and you say, what divides Europe from Asia? You're going to write the Ural Mountains, the Ural Mountains, okay? Uh, we'll just leave it purple. Uh, this continent down here, just about everybody knows. Uh, I had a uh, geography professor that uh, used to always give his students pretests, and he said, yeah, uh, I had students that couldn't find the United States, and you could tell the irritation in his voice. But then he brightened and he said, but everybody, for some reason, can always find Australia. I don't know. It is set apart, okay? Australia is a country, Australia is an island, but Australia also is a continent. And it's a very interesting place. Um, I've not got through there yet. It is high on my bucket list to visit, and someday I will get there. Okay, so this is Australia. I'm just going to put AU because I can't get it all in there. Okay, so we have North America, we have South America, we have Africa, we have Europe, we have Asia, we have Australia. Last continent is down here at the bottom of the world. This is Antarctica. I'm just going to put ant. Yeah, maybe I'll write it out. Antarctica. Now, Antarctica is an interesting place. It is extremely cold. You already know that. Uh, there is land down there. Okay? There is land that would be above sea level. Uh, you can only see the edges of it because most of Antarctica is covered by this huge chunk of ice. It is a frozen wilderness down there. Geographers will say it is a desert. Desert because there's not a lot of rainfall. A lot of moisture in the form of ice and snow. Not a lot of uh, life down there. Uh, lots of penguins. Some of you probably saw the movie Happy Feet, so we know that there's penguins down there. Uh, in fact, uh, in the news here, just it was about two weeks ago, they uh, just discovered through satellite photography a bunch of big penguin colonies that they didn't know existed. 
So where they're worried about, you know, what's going to happen to all the penguins, they're less worried now because there's a whole bunch more than they thought there was. Um, very few people live down there. The, uh, not the only ones that are there year round are the scientists. And it's a big deal if you can get a scientific assignment to Antarctica. Uh, they're kind of coveted. Um, when you go down there, however, you sign a, a little waiver saying you understand that you go down there beginning of winter in Antarctica, you can't come back. You're stuck there. Okay? Very dangerous to try and get you out uh, during, the, uh, during the winter months down there. So you just plan on staying. Um, not that they can't get you out. A few years ago, uh, they had to do a, an emergency run down there in the middle of winter. Uh, each, uh, each scientific station, and there's only two or three of them, each scientific station down there has a doctor um, and a dentist to take care of you know, whatever emergency comes up. However, at this one station, the doctor got appendicitis. Now, uh, you may or may not know that appendicitis can be extremely serious and can kill you. Um, what are you going to do? Your doctor is the one that's in trouble. Um, to her credit, I would love to take this woman out to lunch. I mean, this is really spectacular. To her credit, she volunteered to operate on herself using mirrors and local anesthetic. And uh, uh, fortunately, the powers that be, her boss says, no, 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 that's not going to happen. Uh, they, they rigged up this special Arctic plane um, to fly down and pick her up. Now, it is so cold down there that fuel will freeze. Uh, maybe you didn't know that, but yes, fuel can freeze and uh, hydraulics and all that other stuff that makes an airplane fly. Uh, so they had to insulate the tanks and it'll insulate all of the uh, hydraulic lines. Uh, they waited for a break in the weather. Uh, they, they cleared the runway and uh, this, this plane came down. It landed, it did not stop. They did not want the tires freezing to the, uh, to the runway. Uh, it did not stop. Uh, as he was moving, a new doctor jumped out. They threw out some supplies. The old doctor, the sick doctor, got on board. It turned around and flew away. So it was successful, and uh, she had her operation and was doing just fine. Thank you very much. Okay, so anyway, Ar Antarctica, not a friendly place to be, although it has become uh, a big tourist destination here lately. Now, not that there are thousands of tourists that go down there, but there are elite tourists that are going down there. Um, I've got to travel a little bit and you always will run across the elite tourists. These are the people that love to talk about where they have been. And uh, their, their big thing is to compare passports. So every time you go into a country, you have a passport, they will stamp your passport with a, uh, a little stamp showing that you have been there. And these elite travelers will pull out their passports and they will say, oh, I've been here. Have you been here? Ah, oh, you haven't? Uh, I'm one up on you. Um, it's a fun thing to do. And, you know, bless their hearts, travel's a great thing to do. And I intend to do more if I ever retire. Um, where was I? Oh, yes, uh, tourism to Antarctica. Uh, it is starting to become a big deal among those who are real travelers and who can afford to do it. Uh, they go down in cruise liners. Not, not the giant ones. They tend to be smaller because this is kind of an expensive trip. You don't get a whole lot of people who want to do it. Most of them go down there just so they can say they did it. But if you go down, you look at the ice flows, you look at the icebergs, you look at all the sea life. There's all kinds of sea life out there, the whales and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they will put you in a little boat and they will run you up to the shore so you can actually set foot on the continent and see the little penguins and all that stuff. Um, there is even one rock and roll band that loves to brag. I think it's Axl Rose uh, <laughs> that loves to brag that they have played a concert in every continent. Uh, basically, they went down a ship, did a little concert just so they could brag about it. All right. So there are the seven continents, the seven continents, okay? North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia. Australia, and Antarctica. Okay, take uh, 20 seconds, memorize those. Ready, steady, go.
18, 19, 20. All right, let's see what you know. Okay, a little self-test, what's this thing? Yep, that's right, Asia, biggest continent in the world, most populous continent in the world. What's this thing? Yep, that's Europe, that's Europe, okay? What separates Europe from Asia? If you said Ural Mountains, you are correct, Ural Mountains. Okay, what's this little thing down here? Yep, that's Australia. Everybody knows that one. And the big ice cube, what do we call it? You said Antarctica, pat yourself on the head and say, I'm such a good boy because that is absolutely correct. Okay, and this one, 54 countries, you're only gonna learn 20 of them. This is Africa, Africa. Okay, and this is North what? America, that's correct. And this is South what? America, you are correct. Okay, uh, make sure you have those down. Those will be on the final. All right, let's go on to the second thing. Actually, I guess it's the third thing we're going to learn. And that is the oceans. Okay, we're gonna do four oceans, four oceans. This is the Pacific Ocean. Pacific Ocean, it is the biggest ocean in the world and you have no conception of how big this thing is. <sighs> you fly over it, oh my gosh. It takes forever to fly over the Pacific Ocean. Um, Hopefully you will be rich when you get to do it and you can be up in first class and they spread the, the seats out and you can actually sleep away. Uh, you know, I'm not rich, so I flew tourist class in the back. It is uncomfortable, it is long, it takes forever, 14 to 20 hours, whatever. I don't even remember, I just remember being colossally uncomfortable. Uh, Pacific Ocean, it is the biggest ocean in the world. What's this over here? Why am I putting a big P there? Because this is the Pacific Ocean too. Okay, this is the Pacific. Wait a minute, are there two Pacifics? No, of course they're not. The Earth is a big ball, okay? The Earth is round. And when you make a map of it, you gotta flatten it out, which means you have to cut it someplace. And so we generally cut it in the Pacific Ocean, flatten it out, because you're not gonna hurt anybody's feelings if you cut it in the Pacific Ocean. Okay, so this is the Pacific, and this is the Pacific. On the final, you can put it in both places, or you can put it in just one place, and you will get credit for it. Okay, Pacific Ocean. This is the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean, okay? Separates North America from what? From what? What's this? From Europe. Okay, good. Europe is what direction from North America? If you said east, you are amazing, okay? Separates North America from Europe and South America from, what's this, what's this, what's it called? You said Africa, you're a hero, okay? So we have Pacific and the Atlantic. Over here, we have the Indian Ocean. Indian Ocean named after the country of India, which is right here, the second most populous country in the world. Okay, so this is the Indian Ocean. It separates, what's this continent called? Yep, Africa, you're right again, from this continent, which is Australia, you bet, you bet. Okay, now, down here, there's something called the Southern Ocean. Don't write this down if you're taking notes. Uh, some geographers teach the Southern Ocean. It's, you know, pretty much a line from here down to the uh, to Antarctica. Uh, we're not going to deal with it, okay? Just be aware that sometimes you will see references to the Southern Ocean, and this is what they're talking about, this area right down here. For our purposes, we're just going to ignore it. It's not on the final, so don't worry about it. All right, up here we have the Arctic Ocean, the Arctic Ocean. And it's not Antarctica. This is Antarctica, the continent. Up here we have the Arctic Ocean, the Arctic Ocean. And those of you that got the little packets I mailed out can see all the spellings. There is no land mass up here at the top of the world. Okay? It is just a big moving chunks of ice. Okay? That's all it is up there, ice. Um, 
used to be a big uh, big wall, big barrier to shipping going up here. That is changing, and we will talk about that a little bit later. But up at the top of the world, there is the Arctic Ocean, and it is covered with ice. Less ice now because of global warming than before, but still lots of ice up there. Uh, let me show you just a quick video, a little thing on Antarctica. Gleaming starkly white, the frozen Arctic Ocean crowns the top of the world above 66 degrees north latitude. In the Arctic, above the ice and below, wildlife prospers in what might seem to be an inhospitable environment. But it's exactly what is required for polar bears, ring seals, and the snowy white beluga whales the highly local canaries of the sea. Narwhals, the legendary unicorns of the sea, and bowheads, the great ice whales, thrive there and nowhere else on Earth. cold, dark waters of the Arctic, life abounds as it has for millions of years, unknown, unseen, and still largely unexplored. Under the ice, and actually within the ice itself, life is surprisingly rich and diverse. Photosynthesizing organisms cast a green glow across the sweep of the ice. Fulmars, guillemots, kittiwakes, and ivory gulls survive on the diet rich of Arctic cod, while mirrors dive down as deep as a hundred meters in search of fish and squid. Walruses look elsewhere for meals, using their great tusks to plow into the soft underwater terrain to extract clams, worms, and other tasty morsels. And deep within the heart of the Arctic, 4,200 meters down, is the North Pole, visited for the first time in August 2007 by six explorers in a pair of Russian submarines, Mir 1 and Mir 2. Hours, they observed and documented the seafloor, struggling to understand the nature of polar life far below the surface. The struggle to reach the North Pole at the Arctic surface has lured hardy explorers for centuries. Robert Perry and Matthew Henson claimed the first successful expedition in 1909. Explorers to the Arctic Ocean have sought the fabled Northwest Passage, a direct shipping route from Europe to Asia across the polar ice. Today, global warming is melting the ice cap so fast that scientists expect the passage to become a reliable summer shipping route within a few decades. That's good news for shipping, but bad news for polar bears. Arctic seals, and the people of the Arctic, whose cultural heritage is inextricably linked to living in a realm dominated by ice and snow. Keen interest is now focused on the Arctic and its nature, particularly because of the magnified importance of the frozen northern waters in shaping global climate and weather, the circulation of ocean currents, and ultimately, the well-being of humankind. Okay, I think that was kind of a neat little thing. Now, there are some interesting things going on up there 
on the Arctic Ocean. Uh, as the ice is melting, people are, different countries are starting to think, you know, what is under the, under the ice? What is under the Arctic Ocean? Is there oil there and other minerals? Uh, we know that there is oil in Alaska because we've been pumping it out of North Slope of Alaska for a long time. Everybody thinks there's a lot of oil up there and there very well could be. So who does it belong to? Well, traditionally, nobody owns an ocean except for your territorial claims, which we will talk about later. Who, if you think back of that map, who has the longest Arctic barrier or border? That would be Russia. Russia uh, has been very interested in lay, staking a claim to as much of the Arctic Ocean as they can, uh, hence the, uh, the submarines going down at the, uh, the North Pole. What they didn't show in this little video is the Russians actually planted a little Russian flag on the bottom of the Arctic Ocean, claiming this uh, ocean for, uh, for Russia. Kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, but be more on more than claims. They are putting a lot of Arctic military facilities in there. They have a uh, good sized fleet of icebreakers, which are necessary really to maneuver up in there. Um, I think they had like 11. If I remember right, the USA has one good sized uh, icebreaker. Um, so they are trying to strengthen their claim. But other countries have their claims up there. The United States, thanks to Alaska, we claim part of it. Canada complain, com, complains, <laughs> claims a big piece of it. Norway, even Denmark, which uh, really isn't on the Arctic, but Greenland belongs to Denmark, and Greenland is on the Arctic. So Denmark has a claim up there. Uh, this has the potential for being problems sometime in the future. We will have to live and see. All right, hey, that wraps up the first lesson. We learned seven continents. We learned four oceans. Um, be sure you uh, get those, those memorized and stay tuned or tune in later for uh, lesson number two. Glad you're with me. Have a great and wondrous day. We'll see you around campus. Bye.